Welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. Can narcissists really move on like nothing happened? It certainly appears as if he or she has sailed off into the sunset with a new supply, the big bounty, which probably used to be yours, looking all loved up, enjoying all that life has to offer. And the narcissist will tell you that they're happy to see the last of you and that their new life is so much better than the one they had with you. You, on the other hand, can barely crawl out from underneath your bed clothes and you feel like you've been blown to pieces by a landmine. Is it true? Has the narcissist moved on like nothing has happened? Are they capable of this and what does it really mean? The answers that you receive in today's Thriver TV episode may shock you because they most likely will not be what you expect. Okay, so before we deeply investigate this, thank you everyone who subscribed to my channel and supported the Thriver mission. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. All right, so deep breath now and let's just plunge in. We're going to start off with the questions and the devastation on your mind. Of course, it's emotionally devastating to believe that someone has moved on from you as if you never existed. To us, that equals, I wasn't meaningful to that person. And also that terrible question, which initially threatens the very fabric of our inner identity. Did this person even love me? as well as all the insidious things that we can think about ourselves regarding not being good enough. And what does a new supply have that I don't? Okay, so if this is you, please pause the video and let me know in the comments below what it is that you're feeling. Yet, truly, we are applying all these questions and thinking to the normal human equation of things, which narcissists simply don't fit into. All right, so let's look at the question deeply. Can narcissists really move on like nothing happened? I'm gonna drop the bombshell on you immediately because let's just get through this. The answer is yes, the narcissist can and does move on like nothing happened. And this isn't because you're unlovable or unworthy of love. And I know you might think that, and you always will if you hold other people's character, actions, and behaviors as the barometer of your worth, which naturally we need to address and heal. The real reason being that they can move on as if nothing's happened is because nothing real did actually happen. And the reason that nothing real happened is because the narcissist is not a real person. He or she is a fictitious character, a false self, playing life as a stage play of their life to feed their ego, which is the false self. And when the play isn't turning out how the narcissist needs it to, to gain enough narcissistic supply, which is attention and significance, the narcissist needs to exit stage right and walk onto another stage as quickly as possible. And here is another bombshell. You are meaningless to the narcissist when you're no longer the chosen self-medication fixed to feed their ego. And that isn't an insult, and it doesn't mean that you're meaningless. It's actually a severe limitation of the narcissistic personality. Them not being real means others are not real to them either. Other individuals are merely inanimate objects to the narcissist, extras who have a necessary role in a particular play at a particular time. And that was you. I personally know the total agony of wondering incessantly in the past, can he really move on so fast as if nothing happened? And was I that meaningless to him? And my heart goes out to you with a big cyber hug if you are going through this. And I want you to understand how to get free from the place you're in very quickly and powerfully by inviting you into a radical way to accept the truth and heal. And I promise you that I'm not granting you the truth to shame you, blame you, or make you feel worse. I'm telling you this truth to help empower you, set you free and heal you. 
I know of people who've been waiting years for the narcissist to return to them and they've never accepted the discard. That is a living hell and you truly can start to heal and access your personal heaven instead. So now let's continue to peel this back. I want to have a look at when the narcissist attempts to hoover you back in. When we understand the motivation of a narcissist who uses people as props to feed their ego, this explains the hoovering phenomenon. Narcissists are famous for circling back to you and telling you that they miss you, that he or she made a mistake, still loves you, wants to work things out and so on and so forth. Or they will incite an argument with you whereby you get upset and hook in or he or she then smooches up to you again. And this is going to make, it does, it makes your head spin because you say to yourself, hang on, you moved on, you were with a new person or at the very least you told me you didn't love me, you never wanted to be with me again and now you want to get back with me? Many a person has fallen for it, I did too. And it leads to more pain, even worse abuse and harder discards. Why does the narcissist do it? They do it because they feel needy for the ego feed of knowing that you still want them. Or perhaps because the new supply is not turning out as well as expected. And the real truth is that narcissists are greedy for ego feeds and they're indiscriminate. With tortured love, there's lots of drama and emotional energy to mine. Many narcissists will have sex with their exes with zero regard for the new supply. And isn't it interesting that you thought you were meaningless and worthless? If we're using the measuring stick of integrity, loyalty and monogamy, this means the new supply is also. Who does the narcissist really love? No one. The narcissist's allegiance is with one entity only, his or her false self, the relentless master who requires insatiable feeding of significance. And not only at a current or former partner's expense, at the narcissist's expense as well. Can you imagine the insanity this sort of life creates? Can you imagine lying and having to triangulate, triangulate effectively, sneaking around covering tracks and living with the possibility of being found out and their life exploding at any moment? Welcome to the narcissist's normal world, which is forever cracking, breaking, burning people out and needing the up and leave and begin again effort to survive. Let's have a look if you're not hoovered again. I know this initially can be terrible for you. You may feel after the narcissist has moved on with somebody else like, what is so wrong with me that I'm not being hoovered? And this is what I believe is the absolute truth about narcissists. They deliver to us the thing that hurts the most. And this is both because they've identified it and because narcissists in our life provide an incredible opportunity for us to heal our unhealed parts that they painfully trigger. My greatest recommendation to you is to take this as a blessing, the silence of not being hoovered and use the opportunity to turn inwards and heal, heal the pain that you're feeling. And then I promise you, you won't give two hoots about who the narcissist has run off with. I promise you also that when you do the inner work, just as I did on the reasons why I was assigning another person as my level of lovability, worth and value, and instead came home to being a beautiful full source to myself, the pain and the longing will totally go. And after you do the inner work, you will no longer accept any Hoover attempts, if they do come, any more than you would nail yourself to the back of a burning door, which would be pretty bad. I assure you, if you start napping, you will know exactly what I mean. Okay, so anyone can look like their life is awesome on social media and if you're stalking the narcissist's life, it may appear to be, but are they at peace and do they feel whole within? 
are they able to be real, honest and communicate healthily in relationships in order to create healthy partnerships of mutuality? These are questions we can investigate when reflecting on the narcissist and also about ourselves. People who refuse to turn inwards and process and heal their previous relationship pain to completion, which means healing previously unintegrated and un unhealed parts within self are stuck in the same cycles, going through the same relationships, just with different faces. As much as people try to get a person that's going to be different this time, it doesn't happen. Narcissists don't take time out to reflect. They don't heal. They don't learn from their mistakes. The narcissistic motto is, you are in my life to provide me with ego attention and significance and let me mine you so that you fulfill all of my needs. And when you stop playing that role, I will punish and discard you. This is not a relationship. You never had a real relationship with this person. It's a dictatorship, no matter what wrapping it appears to be disguised in. Sooner or later, any new supplier is gonna see the mask fall and come face to face with the terrible trauma of what their relationship is really about. And of course, they are likely to go through the same journey of denial again and again as they try to make that relationship be what it never was, what they thought it was. That is until they realize the same truth that you're facing now, that what this is really about is turning inwards to love and heal yourself back to value, worth and wholeness. It never is anybody else's job to grant us that. So let's have a look at the shift in perception. When I removed myself from my narcissistic relationships, I lost almost everything I owned. My life went being, from being financially secure and successful from before meeting him to being significantly diminished. And here he was now living in the home that I'd bought us living the high life and making a ton of money in a business that I'd set up for him. Did I feel cheated, defiled, ripped off and destroyed? Yes, initially I did. Was I suffering agoraphobia so badly that I couldn't even walk out my front door without having a panic attack? Was I so crippled that I could barely function? Yes. Was the ex-narcissist romancing women, whining, dining, buying new and better cars and having a wow of a time? Yes. With Quantum Freedom Healing, which is NARP, I let go of my envy, pain and fears about money and possessions. I let go of the need for bigger and better things in my life. Instead, I focused on finally healing my inner being as my highest mission. I valued my soul above all else. Then an incredible inner peace and love came as I released more and more trauma and everything started to fall into place. Yet I no longer needed it to be in order for me to be happy and whole. I was just being happy and whole because of releasing my trauma and living without it. And then I understood the truth. The absolute devastation of all of the pain of a false life with a narcissist had forced me to my knees to finally turn inwards and partner with myself. And the rest is history. And I'm thrilled beyond measure that this happened for me. Is this resonating with you? Are you feeling a shift in perception? Can you sense that what I'm saying is the truth? Are you already living from the Thriver perspective? Pause this video and let me know in your comments below because I'd love to hear from you in regard to that. So now here is the thing for you. It's healthy for you to not jump straight into another relationship. If you try to, you know it's likely to be a terrible experience. Why? Because your soul knows that the opportunity you really want more than anything is to heal, evolve and grow towards the sustainability of fulfilling relationships that are real. The narcissist can't have real relationships. 
False, broken, unfulfilling relationships are what he or she living exclusively from the false self is doomed to have. However, you can have real relationships if you're willing to do the inner work. Relationships where you will experience being valued at the level that you value yourself. Relationships where you will know and connect to people with true characters, kindness and conscience. But this only becomes possible through growth and healing. And if you don't do the work to come home to the knowing of your own self-love, worth and fullness within, then you're always going to seek it from outside of yourself. And I promise you that when you get determined to get off this terrible ride of painful, unsustainable relationships onto real and healthy relationship trajectories, you will know that being discarded and not mattering were actually powerful gifts to you because they forced you to get real, to really partner with yourself with devotion, love and purpose to repair the relationship with yourself to become a completely different person going forwards. You will become a person who is no longer being unconsciously a broken, unhealed child within an adult's body trying to find a parent to do it different this time. Rather, you're going to heal up to becoming a solid, self-loving adult in your own body, seeking and accepting other healthy and hell adults in partnerships. And I would love to get you started on exactly that path, the one away from pain and resentment towards health, love and excitement for what you can create in your life. So let's do this together. I'd love you to click the link at the top right of this video to get started accessing my free empowering resources. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe so that you'll be notified as soon as each new one is released. And if you liked this, click like. Also, please share with your communities so that we can help people awaken to these truths. And as always, I'm greatly looking forward to answering your comments and your questions below. So until the next one, keep smiling, keep healing and keep thriving because there's nothing else to do. I really hope this has helped and lots of love. Bye bye.